Hello and welcome to another Doctor Who Big Finish video. In today's Doctor Who Big Finish video, I'm looking at this bad boy. Yes, it's round three for the Eighth Doctor in the Time War. But um, this one's a little bit different. We've had the War Master, we've had the War Doctor, and now we've had the War Valyard. What's next? The War Rani, the War Monk, and my personal favourite, what I would love to see, the War Scorchy. So we'll see how I fare with the Eighth Doctor Time War Volume 3. Now, the Eighth Doctor Time War so far for me it's kind of been a bit of a mixed bag. Some of the stories have been rather good, but I don't feel like some of the stories have utilised the sort of Time War format, really exploring the nature of time. So we'll see whether Time War 3 puts the time in the Time War. So taking a look at the presentation for the 8th Doctor Time War Volume 3, we have the Doctor Who logo there, some Daleks and a nice fiery explosion, the War Valyard and the 8th Doctor's clothes. Then we have the 8th Doctor himself there, which is rather nice to see the big finish using a behind the scenes photo of Paul McGann and they photoshopped it on the Night of a Doctor body and it just seems rather refreshing to see a different photo of um, the 8th Doctor instead of the standard you know, photo of the Night of a Doctor 8th Doctor. We've got Bliss, Dalek, General Tamasan and the TARDIS and this sort of, uh, sort, of, uh, sort of square motif there which is rather nice. 8th Doctor Time War Volume 3, the side of the release. So taking a look at the individual cover art for the State of Bliss, so we have the Doctor there, Bliss and then we have Kala and we have this sort of space vortex background. The back of the release, so do feel free to pause if you want to know more about this story. Taking a look at the leaflet now, so if we open it up, we have writer's notes by Matt Fitton, and we have a cast photo there, and then we have the cast list for the whole series there, and the disc art for this story. Moving on to the second story now, The Famished Lands, again, the cover is basically Bliss, the Doctor again. I rather like this because it's kind of a different photo of uh, Paul McGann which makes it kind of a bit of a refreshing cover and we have this nice sort of green background there which is all very nice and the back of the release so do feel free to pause if you want to know more about this story opening up the leaflet we have writer's notes there and then we have a lovely photo of Paul McGann and the disc art for the story taking a look at the third story now so we have this nice sort of medieval castle background with a Dalek spaceship the Dalek time strategist General Tamasan and the 8th Doctor. And the back of the release, so if you want to know more about this story, then do feel free to pause. Taking a look at the leaflet now, so we have Writer's Note there by Roland Moore and a cast photo there. And then we have this sort of nice or sort of faded um, cover there with some sort of bullet holes and the discard. Taking a look at the final story within this set, we have the War Valyard cover, which is all very visually striking with a sort of 6th Doctor uh, vortex motif for Dalek, and then we've got sort of the uh, Day of the Doctor thing, what we've seen in the title sequence and reminiscent of what we've seen in the 12th Doctor intro. Some Daleks, the uh, original Valyard, then we have the War Valyard, and then the 8th Doctor there. And the back of the release, if you want to know more about the story, then do feel free to pause. So opening up the booklet, we have writer's notes by John Dorney, and then we have a cast photo there of the people we've involved with in this story, and then we have production credits. The disc art for the story, and the behind the scenes disc. The State of Bliss. So the purpose of The State of Bliss is the clues in the title. It's very much all about Bliss. It's very much a character piece about Bliss. What feels very long overdue as Big Finish themselves admit that Bliss wasn't meant to be a long-term companion. Um, so this feels like a very odd place to start the box set. You know, we're three quarters of the way through the series and we're only just learning about the companion. You know, I feel like this story should have been at the latest been in box set, you know, number two. Uh, you know, Lords of the Terror was meant to be Bliss's sort of character piece story, um, but this is very much the expansion Bliss needed. So this story very much feels like the aftermath of the Lords of Terror, where the Doctor took Bliss back to Derelobia, and I remember saying in my review of Time War 2 that um, surely the events what happened within that story would have, had, would have had a massive impact on Bliss as a character, and they never touched upon within Box Set 2 again, so this very much feels like a continuation of Lords of Terror. So this story feels like a continuation from it, as we have the Doctor wanting to try and fix things and see when the Time War affected Bliss's life. So we have Bliss connected to the telepathic circuit, where we see um, alternative timelines where Bliss must find the right life and live it. So remember in Ravenous 3, um, in Companion Piece, Bliss makes an appearance, and Bliss has no memory of the Doctor. So this story makes sense of companion piece, which is rather nice. We have some great imagery within this feature of this sort of time vortex um, being this sort of rainbow of colours swirling all around, which is just brilliantly described. And alongside that, we have some great concepts in the form of the quantum visualizer that, you know, what sees 
all these various possibilities and bliss you know everything around bliss makes time unhinged which is rather interesting you know why is time unraveling around bliss so not only do we expand on bliss as a character but we expand on the planet of Derelobi, uh, on bliss's friends and family um, so this story is a very much a tale of two halves. The first half is very much exploring Bliss's different lives from the Starliner to her computer skills at university. And the other half of the story very much being us getting the answers about Bliss. Where we get some very interesting twists involving a character called Kala. So this is when the story feels a bit foreboding but we do have a rather nice little uh, ending with the Doctor and Bliss. One thing I will say about Time War 3 is that it has this sort of Netflix series quality to it. It has that sort of... Uh, binge watch, well it's binge listen in this case, but as soon as you finish one episode you just want to dive straight into the next because this box set kind of all flows into one, especially Fugitive for Time into the War Valleyard, it definitely has that sort of binge listening feel to it and I really like that about this series. So moving on to characters now, we have the Doctor played by Paul McGann, it's Paul McGann, he's brilliant, need I say more? Well I'm going to say a bit more. Um, the Doctor very much takes a back seat within this story but Paul McGann does get to play some different roles throughout this story. You know, which is a nice change, much like Ravenous 2 when he's telling the story. Uh, so this story kind of reminds me of um, Natural History of Fear, that big finished story in the Divergent series. It kind of has that kind of different feel for McGann to play a different role in the story. Um, but in terms of a Doctor, um, the Doctor gets some great stuff because there's a sense of guilt and he wants to fix and make things right, you know, you know what the Time Lords did. I mean, here's a great speech about action, so Paul McGann is brilliant within this story for the bit what he is the Doctor and playing all the various roles within this story. Moving on to Bliss now, played by Raki Fakura. Um, she does a good job bringing even more life to a character full of energy and, and this sort of underlying concern about what's going on and this sort of curious by the mystery of the Doctor. And we see her computer skills being used with um, the robotics and her caring nature and her wanting to make a difference at the end of the story. But this does... But this story really does make Bliss feel more of a fleshed out character and well realised. And it makes you realise that Bliss is just one of many casualties within the Time War. Kala played by Angie Kala played by Angie Mohandra, um, the person who played Rani in the Sarah Jane Adventures. Um, so she gives a very good performance to one of Bliss's friends, you know, very uh, sarky and witty to um, Ryle, uh, and very much an optimistic character. Um, so yeah, I like her. Very good character. Deepa played by Niana Wardy, um, a great strong performance of her being this very mysterious foreshadowing character and being very pushy. Um, with her making propaganda videos and very curious by Bliss, you know, being this sort of centred all around time and time and hinging around her. Um, and her character has a very great twist towards the end of the story. So what are my concluding thoughts on the state of Bliss? Well, I think that this is very much a long overdue story, which, you know, it does seem strange that we're, you know, three quarters of the way through the series and we're finally getting a story what really explores Bliss as a character. Um, you know, we have some nice little moments of seeing these alternative timelines, um, you know, with these creatures called the Staves, what are basically alternatives to Daleks. Um, but I will be honest, the story at times does come across a bit jarring, how it just flashes between um, realities, which I guess kind of makes sense, but to me it just feels a little bit jarring at times. I will say towards the end of the story, the story did kind of lose me. So at its core, I think that this is a very good, strong character piece story with some very interesting concepts and really helps flesh Bliss out as a character and really makes you feel the emotion for a character you know when you realize that she's just another casualty of the time war so I'm going to give State of Bliss I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 I think that there's some really good ideas within it. So moving on to the famished land so we pick off right from where the State of Bliss left off with the Doctor and Bliss wanting to help people in the time war and this story Wow, I honestly think that this is a little hidden gem within this set. I absolutely love this story, you know, the world building within this story is great, this sort of green paradise, but the planet itself isn't self-efficient enough to survive, so we have the Time War cutting off the trade route, causing civilizations to be starved out of existence, what I think is a really neat idea. You know, and this story looks at the bystanders who are unaware of the Time War, and they see no difference between the Time Lords and the Daleks, with the population basically being walking skeletons and the enabler robots slaughtering the hungry. So this story is incredibly bleak, but yet it's able to have a lot of fun. 
with some entertaining scenes with the Doctor and Bliss in a restaurant, very reminiscent of the scene with the Doctor and Clara in Deep Breath, which is very nice. And we base have the Eighth Doctor high on fumes and being chased by dancing monkeys. If that doesn't sell the story to you, I really don't know what does because this story is amazing. I love it. It's got so many good ideas within it and it's just, I love it. It's so great. But we do have some very intriguing questions though. What is this mysterious food substance called Icor? This grey gloopy slime. Why is it not able to sustain um, the people of this planet? And that all leads to a very dark revelation within the story and with the nutrition uh, centre and the feeding station not being what they say they are. Um, and this story, you know, those are some of the grim ideas within this story. This story has like three or four different grim ideas, very strong ethical themes. Um, and for a story what's only 48 minutes, it crams in a lot, but it doesn't feel rushed at all. It has some great world building, brilliant concept with action packed final 15 minutes. And the ending is cracking with the Daleks having technology, what is affecting the multiverse. So this story just has it all for me. I love it. Moving on to characters now, the 8th Doctor, another excellent performance and I absolutely love the 8th Doctor within this story because you're basically, you don't want to mess with the 8th Doctor within this because he's basically clashing with authority straight away, he's horrified by the situation and constantly challenging um, everything about this world, you know, because the Doctor really comes across as a force of nature within this story and he's ready to tear this world apart until everything is fixed within this world and the 8th Doctor, and the 8th Doctor basically being high on fumes is just worth the price of this story alone. It is brilliant. Just him, imagine, you know, seeing these uh, monkeys dancing on the ceiling. It is brilliant. It is amazing. Bliss Raki Fakura, um, again, another really good performance. So she's shocked by what's happening on this world and is kind of haunted by, especially what the enablers did in the sort of uh, feeding station. That's when she kind of gets sort of shook by what's happening on this planet, and she's very emotional towards some of the characters. And she has some great little action moments within this story. Arian Wynn, played by played by Natalie Gummid. Um, a great performance of her being this very authoritative character, you know, curious by the presence of the Doctor and Bliss, and you know, thinking that, you know, she's doing her people a favour, you know, this sort of act of kindness of trying to help the people. So what am I concluding forwards on the Famished Land? Well, it's an excellent story with great moral themes. You know, about the whole planet being euthanized with rich concepts exploring the sort of bystanders on how small things affect um, worlds on a bigger scale. It's a really great story showing that the time war really does have consequences with the people not involved in the actual war itself. Um, you know, this story is incredibly dark, but it has some really great little quirky moments within the story. And from the chilling sort of Legion of the Bone to the monkeys doing the foxtrot. This story has a perfect balance between bleakness and comedy and I think the comedy really helps lift this story because otherwise this story would be really depressing. Um, so it's nice to have that bit of comedy just to lighten the mood up of this story. So yeah, um, Famished Lands, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I love it. I just think that it is a really great story, really nice balance between comedy and bleakness and you know it just has some really interesting concepts and really does sort of explore the outer worlds what are not affected by the time war by the actual war itself but are cut off by you know the actual war cutting off their uh, food supply and their sort of trade their their trade routes so i feel like that's a very interesting idea uh, you know these people aren't fighting in the war but yet they're being affected um by it because of you know their trade route being cut off moving on to the fugitive in time so the Doctor asked a favour of the Time Lords, now it's time for the Doctor to return the favour as the Doctor and Bliss and General Tamasan are on a reconnaissance mission as they want to find the last Hixari, a species of a Time Lords wiped out. So we have an action packed start to this story with the Doctor and crew trying not to crash land and go undetected because the atmosphere of this planet is brutal and it causes every spaceship um, to crash land. So Roland Moore does a brilliant job creating this medieval world but alarm bells start ringing when the Doctor and crew um, are looking through the vast amount of crashed spaceships when they find modified Dalek technology. So, so it is a race between the Time Lords and the Daleks to find the last Ixari, uh, Shona, with technology from the crashed spaceship. So the Doctor and General Tamazan volunteer to be test subjects and try and find the genetic modifier and find the Dalek agent, while the Daleks are lurking in the shadows. So you're wondering, what are the Daleks planning? While Bliss is left to work in the palace for the King, which leads to some funny moments. While the Doctor's compassion gets the better of him, with him wanting to help Shonoff escape and help her build her teleport, 
And we do get a nice little log to the Garlids. Uh, now the Garlids featured in a main range story called Memories of a Tyrant, but, uh, written by Roland Moore, so it was quite nice that he kind of linked back um, to his original creation of a, a Doctor Who monster there, so it was quite nice to tie into that. Now the final 10 minutes are action packed. They're incredibly tense, the 8th Doctor really shining and confronting Shonoff. You know, not vengeance, but ensuring a legacy for your people to survive, and the ending Oh boy, the ending just really makes you want to dive into, you know, the war valley. It's such a brilliant ending. And the, you know, the action moments within this story, especially the last 10 minutes of the Daleks sort of beginning to invade the planet. So moving on to characters now, the Doctor played by Paul McGann. Another cracking performance as he's incredibly reckless and very inquisitive and just dives straight into the heart of the action. With him having great sympathy for Shonoff, uh, with him wanting, you know, to fix what the Time Lords did to a speech sheet you know, wanting to fix what the Time Lords did to a species, and that's kind of a running theme for this box set of trying to undo what the Time Lords did for the Eighth Doctor, so I really like that because he tried to do the, do the same for Bliss, so I, I kind of like that little arc he has within this box set, you know, and, he's, and he has a great speech about life, you know, where there's life there's hope, which could be a nice little nod to the Third Doctor's last moments um, in Planet of the Spiders, which, you know, if it is, then that's brilliant. <laughs> Bliss, played by Raki Fakra, another great performance. Um, you know, probably my favourite story for Bliss within this box, actually, because she has some great funny moments with the King, pretending to be a Felion, and her very keen to investigate and constantly clashing with General Tamasan. It's brilliant. Bliss is just absolutely wonderful within this story. This is my favourite uh, Bliss story within this set. General Tamerson has a new regeneration in the form of Adele Anderson, um, a great performance as she's just incredibly focused on her mission and wanting to achieve her goal with her being very stern and authoritative and not putting up with any of the doctor's nonsense, you know, she's very, she has that kind of brigadier dry wit which I love. So what are my overall thoughts on The Fugitive in Time? Overall this story is another excellent addition, full of wonderful twists and turns. Uh, with great world building and this story really starts exploring time and the Daleks are used very effectively with them being sort of waiting in the shadows to strike. Um, the time strategist is brilliant as ever, that sort of sly, cold, devious tones what Nick Briggs delivers when being the time strategist. Um, you know, there are some quite gruesome moments within this with the, the Ape Doctor on a torture rack. Um, it is really great because it is just a fantastic one and this is kind of how I imagine the Time War series to be, you know, the Doctor going off on these secret missions, you know, I love that type of vibe, it kind of reminds me of Batman March's sort of Time War series, like, I kind of get that vibe off this story, which is a very good thing because I love Batman March's 8th Doctor series, so to me this is kind of how I imagine the Time War series being, and Roland Moore really has captured that to me, so I love this story, so I'm going to give this story, um, again, I'm going to give this story a 9 out of 10, I really did enjoy it, I, I love Bliss within it, Bliss gets some wonderful stuff to do, the Daleks are great, you know, they're used, you know, sparingly within this, but when they they appear, they're just a real force to be reckoned with, and the ending, like I said, it just makes you want to listen to the next story, so Roland Moore has delivered another brilliant story. So moving on to the final story within this box set, and that is the War Valyard, the most anticipated story, and this story certainly delivers that, because it is another fine addition to the series, you know, it is a great little way to close um, this set and this story raises some very interesting questions because this story is full of surprises because this story um, Does call back on the previous stories within this box set, which is rather nice You know we have this great action pack start of the Valyard blowing up Daleks, but Something is not right with the Valyard as he's having a bit of an identity crisis and this story really does explore the Valyard with us learning about the Time Lord politics, you know where they stand with the Valyard with some wanting him dead um, but others thinking he'd be a valuable resource, you know, with him being untroubled by morality. Um, so, so you're wondering what mission did the Time Lord send the Valyard on? Um, you know, and can he really stop the Daleks forever? So, you know, and what are the Daleks planning? You know, what do they hope to achieve on the planet Grav? Now, John Dorney does some wonderful world build. Grav basically being this planet what's been bombed to oblivion and the planet is in a time lock. So the Doctor really wants to know what, why the Valyard is on Grav and fighting in this war, which leads to some great twist of events, which leads to some fantastic twists towards the end of the story with the Dalek base working off memories, you know, why do the Daleks call themselves the Doctor? And honestly, I don't want to say too much on this story because this story um, is just brilliant. It's full of twists and turns. Now, John Dorney really wanted this story to be full of surprises and this story is definitely full of surprises. John Dorney wanted to have that sort of shock factor when we found out the true identity of the Valyard and this kind of does replicate that because it has a lot of 
um, twists and turns, especially towards the end, because when we get towards the end of the story, John Journey just flips the whole story upside down. Everything you've been listening to up until that point just gets twisted on its head and it becomes something completely different. You know, it's full of surprises, full of twists and turns, and it's a story what you just need to experience for yourself. It really is one of those ones where it's a little bit difficult to properly review because it is just very difficult to talk about this one is you know when you finish this story you really do wonder where are they going to take the time war series next because this story has a very shocking revelation and you're like where are they going to go with this series next so i'm very excited to see what they do with the time war series so moving on to characters now the doctor paul mcgann now the war is taking its toll on the doctor from being you know run ragged um and you know he's concerned by the vision of the valyard you know he's troubled and I love the scenes between him and Tamazan as he's very witty, you know, with him stealing Tamazan's TARDIS and he thinks that that will please her because he's conforming to her regulations and she'll be too busy um, being outraged to, to do anything. And uh, just the scenes between the Doctor and the Valyard are brilliant. Like, Paul McGann and, and Michael Jason just work so well within this. The moments they have between each other, it's brilliant. And Paul McGann, again, just really shines. And I feel like that's a recent thing with um, the Paul McGann stuff, what I've listened to, you know, The Further Adventures of Lucy Miller, and this box that I've just really fallen in love with the Eighth Doctor again, which is wonderful because I just feel like Paul McGann is really giving a different energy to his performances within these releases, and it's really great to to have that. Moving on to the Valyard now, played by Michael Jaston. Now he does a magnificent job of him bringing this incredible menace, but also this worse for wear character of him being, you know, slightly dazed, you know, having this sort of uh, questioning his identity, but he feels this. He also feels very Shakespearean in the way he delivers his lines with his grand tones and his voice. Uh, you know, the story really shows the Valyard's linguistic skills with him getting some very badass moments of destroying Daleks and that sort of cackling laugh he has. It is just utterly spine chilling. It is brilliant. And this is a great story for, Valy for the Valyard. It is brilliant and he has some excellent speeches within it. Bliss, played by Iraqi Fakra, another good performance of her being troubled as well. As the Doctor, you know, we see her trust within the Doctor and, you know, her belief in the Doctor, which is rather nice. And, you know, she's trying to piece together why the Valyard is bad news. Nim, played by Venice Van Surum, the Valyard's companion, you know, very much a sweet, innocent character who is incredibly naive of her being, you know, totally believing in the Valyard that he can, you know, save the day. So what are my concluding thoughts on the War Valyard? Well, I think that it is an excellent way to close this set, you know, full of twists and turns, you know, happening all over the place. Um, and it very much feels like two stories all happening at once with the Valyard fighting on Grav and the Doctor trying to uncover the mystery of the Valyard on Grav. Um, you know, and I feel like this is probably my favourite Valyard story. You know, Michael Jason just steals the show within this with him playing two sides of his character, um, which is brilliant. And this story, you know, answers questions, but it raises some even more interesting questions. Like I said, this story really sort of you know, twist the Time War series on its head and I'm really interested to see what direction they will go with it. Um, so yeah, The War of Valyard, I love it. I think that it is a really great story um, and just, just, I love it. I think that it is great. Um, so I'm going to give this story again, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I think that it is a brilliant addition to the Time War series and definitely, definitely interesting to see The War of Valyard come into the Time War front. So, what are my concluding thoughts on the Ape Doctor Time War Volume 3? Well, I love it. I think that this is probably my favourite Ape Doctor Time War box that Big Finish have done. Um, I feel like they're finally getting the idea of the Time War. I feel like this story, uh, well, I feel like this box has some incredibly rich ideas. The stories um, are just incredibly, you know, rich with the ideas, you know. You know, State of Bliss, I think, is a bit of an odd way to open the box set because we are three quarters away through the series. But it's a much needed story. It's a much needed story to expand on Bliss um, because she did need to be fleshed out and more well realised. And it's kind of nice how it links back to Companion Piece on, on that front. You know, it's not like you need to listen to Companion Piece to understand the state of Bliss. Um, you know, Famish Lands is a personal favourite for me within this set. I, I just love it because it's bleak, it's funny, um, you know, and I just love the idea that, you know, you know, a small event within the Time War is having a big consequence across the universe that civilizations are being starved out of existence. It's just a really powerful line and a really great theme to explore um, within this set. Um, so I really like that, that the bystanders are being affected without even fighting in this war, which is brilliant. You know, Fugitive in Time, um, I just, that's how I kind of imagine the Eighth Doctor's 
to be in the Time War, to be on these little secret missions for the Time Lords. It's great. It is just absolutely lovely. The Daleks lurking in the shadows to strike. Absolutely brilliant. You know, this box set is full of twists and turns, and then you get to the War Valyard. Incredibly rich. It's just so nice to hear Michael Jason again. It is absolutely brilliant to have him, you know, being this menacing figure and just how he works in the Time War is incredibly brilliant that he is this secret weapon, you know, a character what has no moral ties, you know, but he'll happily blow up a planet, you know, if it's for the good of the war. It's it's brilliant to see the contrast between him and, you know, this pacifist of the Eighth Doctor who just reluctantly gets involved because, you know, he doesn't want to see people get hurt. So it is really an interesting box set with some great ideas. It's just incredibly rich as, as a box set. And, it, and it's definitely my favourite Eighth Doctor Time War um, set they've done. And, and like I said, I'm really interested to see what direction they go with because this box set raises some very interesting questions um, within it. So I absolutely love this box set. So I do, I do recommend it, but I feel like it's one of those things where um, you need to listen to box set one, two, and three to sort of get this sort of journey. Um, you know, next year I'll probably overview the series, so I'll do sort of my least favourite box set to my favourite box set. Um, once Volume 4 is released, um, so I'm very excited to see where they're going to take the Ape Doctor in this time war, whether it will lead into the Night of the Doctor, I don't know, but it's very interesting to see where they're going to go, so yeah, um, I do recommend um, Time War 3 if you have experienced the previous Ape Doctor box set, to me it's my personal favourite of the set um, that they've done, so yeah, thank you very much for watching this big finish review, I hope you have enjoyed it. And I'll see you in my next video, whatever that will be. It could be a B&M figure review or it could be the Diary of River Song Series 6. So thank you very much and goodbye.